Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So I was looking over your op GG and and uh the games you sent and I also looked at all the all the notes. Thank you for the for the detailed info on that. It helps a lot. Yeah. Uh it <clears throat> it sounds like you play bot lane not conformed to to the meta you like to play whatever whatever's fun especially uh vegar and yasuor are your like off meta picks but you find that you fall off in the mid game um either due to dying in in weird places or losing cs does that sound about right yes okay um well i was looking the op gg kind of tells the same story um basically your amount of amount of deaths is always going to impact how how much you're able to get your cs and the <clears throat> random deaths are the thing that we're going to most focus on um to try to to become aware of like where where we can be where we should be and and then have a game plan for the mid game so that you can continue growing at the speed that you want to. Does that sound like, sound like a plan? That sounds good, yeah. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do, uh, can you share your screen? Yes. What I will do is I'm going to have you jump into game. Nor normally I would do this with, with a VOD review, but what I'll do is I'm going to give you a little exercise to do. I'm going to walk you through it uh, just against no opponent, and I'm just going to kind of throw questions at you while you're CSing. All right, okay. and the idea is going to be to challenge you to keep your brain on uh, during a mundane activity, but also to try to do that mundane thing well, because you have to do it every game, right? Like, you're going to get 200 CS every single game, might as well have a, a good rapport with that. And, and you've been playing for like eight years or something, right? So, or 10. Yeah, I started, yeah, I started playing in the end of 2012. The end of two, oh okay yeah way back yeah way 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 back this is uh similar to me actually yeah i was uh watching one of your vods yesterday and saw that you had mentioned like the release of like varus and stuff i was like oh wow that's even further back than me <laughs> yeah yeah that must have been 2011 or something like that but pretty close yeah. it was it was the end of whatever season that was season two maybe i, I believe yeah, is the same. end uh, the first champ I remember releasing is Vi. That was okay. crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been a while, right? Yeah. <clears throat> it, it's right. it's funny when I think of the champions that still feel new to me, as far uh -huh. as, like, you know, when they were released and whatnot. Um, all right, let me pop this out and throw it up on screen. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, so <clears throat> the challenge is going to be a CS challenge in training mode. Okay. Um, you're going to go into practice tool, there are various levels to this, and I will throw those up on screen in a moment so that you can have them when, when you have the VOD review. Okay. Um, for now, what I want you to, to do is load in with your most comfortable character. We're not going to do it versus a bot right now um, because I'm going to give you this challenge. The idea is that we're going to try to get as many, as many uh, creeps killed in 10 minutes as possible. And it's going to start off me just letting you get into a rhythm, and then I'm going to start asking you questions like, where might the jungler be? What time is it? Which, uh -huh. which waves are uh, in good, good places? Where might a jungler want to go? You know, things like this. Okay. And uh -huh. these critical questions will kind of ramp up as we go. Okay. Does the pick matter beyond comfort? Uh, nope. Not at okay. all. As long as it's something you feel comfortable CSing on, and I think Yasuo should be able to do that okay. I'm glad to hear, or I'm happy that this is the kind of thing that we're starting with just because this has been what I've been trying to do to warm myself up recently to going into a game for about 10 minutes versus a bot and like trying to just CS practice early laning. Yeah, yep, it's fantastic. It's it's not only is it a good warm up for your fingers and and lubricating your your synapses, right? Like everything, uh, me mechanics is the travel of your ideas inside your brain to the screen, right? And your ability to yeah. do that is what makes you a mechanically uh, capable person. And the more you lubricate those pathways, the easier it becomes. 
And right now, by by giving you some challenges, it, the plan is not to focus so much on on honing in, but making sure that when we are honed into something simple, that we're also aware of other things that are going on. Okay. Um, but this is a great way to prime yourself as well. It's a cute ward. <laughs> I love his royal crapness. Yeah. The little fool noodle sword always gets me. Where, where did you get the idea to put that ward down? Um, so I have been putting my wards here a lot. And I think I mentioned uh, in the game. Are you surrealist or is that someone else? That is me. Okay, in the game that we played together yesterday, when I mentioned uh, my master's friend that I've been playing with, um, I've been asking them to give me tips whenever they feel so inclined to, and they were telling me how, like, like this area is better for spotting more things than mm -hmm. putting it right there. Yep. All right, let's, uh, I'll let you get to the challenge. Yeah, it's... Um... Warding gaps and junctions is often much better than putting wards in bushes. Um, generally, the only ones that really want to be in bushes are control wards. Uh, but yeah, the map is much more wide open. Okay. All right, here we go. Good luck. What about blue wards? Uh, blue wards want to be in a space when you activate them. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Because okay. late game, you don't necessarily need to see into the bush. But if you do... It's often better to blue trinket near the bush, and therefore it also reveals other things, right? Okay. So like it has a splash, and and that can go. So I like the that you're already in a rhythm. That's good. All right, what time is it? About nine thirty-five, I'd say. Okay, what time is it in game? Oh, two twenty, two thirty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. I like that you have the uh, wherewithal to get the other one. Uh, where do you think the jungler is right now? If they start at blue side, they're probably finishing clearing up their blue and preparing to head either mid or bot, potentially, if they want to gank, and then to the red, red side if they are looking to just continue clearing. Okay, so for a moment, take a moment to think about that. The movement that we just made, I know there's no jungler in this game, but what would that do if a jungler were finishing their, their blue quadrant? Then this would be a very dangerous place for me to be right now. Yep. All right, we haven't seen them yet. We're going to assume that they went topside. Okay. Uh, let's say that they show in mid lane. Click on mid lane really quick and then come back. Do you know why we do that? To see what direction they're moving in. See what direct. Well, we can see the direction from the mini map, but with uh, in tandem with our screen and with tab, we can actually paint a picture of what the jungler's intentions are. So let's, uh, we're going to press tab and you're going to look at your own CS. How much do you have? 23. 23. All right. So let's say the jungler had 23. What would you assume that they were up to next? So you saw them. They didn't have blue. They had red and they had 23 CS. Dude, I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head what the timer is for first buffs. But that would either, damn it. It's okay. Take a deep breath. That's a tough one. Um, that's, that's pretty high up as far as like getting to the critical information, what's going on. You're doing a very good job, but you can see how we're more likely to make mistakes as, as the questions get more yeah. um, insightful, right? Mm -hmm. The... Keep on focusing on, on your attacks. I'll just I'll just tell you about the bus real quick. They do spawn at 1.30, and they last for two minutes. And most okay. camps take about 15 seconds to clear. Okay. Um, subsequent buffs, do they still only last one minute? Or is it, like, did they change that? Uh, no, all the buffs all game are two minutes. Okay. The, um, the Baron one is three minutes, and Elder's, what, 3.30? All right, what time is it? 515. 515. All right, what does your lane state mean for your team's jungler? Where where could they be going? Uh, dragon I, or Voidlings? Uh, it, we would have good priority for them to go to Dragon, especially if we were able to push this wave back in. Um, otherwise, 
I've been seeing a lot of supports roaming up around this time to go help with first grubs. Okay. Let's assume so, that, and, that they that they do that. Let's uh, crash this wave and make a recall happen. Yeah. Is this wave going to come back to you, or is it going to sit under your turret, or under their turret? That wave is going to bounce back. Correct. Now, in this game with no bot, um, the fact that you have the highest level in the game means that your minions are stronger than theirs. Mm -hmm. And so it may not actually come back the way that it normally would. Right, so you can uh, see right here, minions are actually a little bit stronger. 5% yeah. um, yeah. for every level. Gotcha. But in a normal game state, this would have, like, gone back this way. Exactly, yep. Okay. Wave management has always been is something I've been struggling with, and that's been something I've been trying to figure out more mm -hmm. recently as well. Uh, I want you to pan to other spots of the map real quick. How many minions are crashing mid? That's two waves. Two waves. All right, what does that mean for your your situation down here? It means that they're probably going to either push mid and go for an objective or look for a gank in a side lane. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean for, for your position? It means I need vision or I need to be playing safer. This is a generally bad position for me to be in when I don't have vision or don't know where the enemy team is moving to. Yep, precisely. Um, all right, let's say that they are all spotted on the grubs. Yeah. I want you to take this wave, push it, and I, then I want you to proxy the next wave. We're going to say all five people showed up over there. Let's see how fast okay. you push. After you proxy this wave, I want you to take another recall. Okay. And this this will basically approximate what might happen in a game where, I mean, in many of the games, especially at, in middle ELOs, people are gonna be pretty glued to the lanes. You know, maybe the support roams, but you're not gonna have any AD carries that uh, roam towards mid lane. But sometimes you might get someone that covers mid while the team's going over. They don't wanna be down here, right? They don't wanna be alone 1v2 or 1v3. Um, yeah. So a lot of a lot of people will move over. Mm -hmm. All right, you're doing great. How how's your emotions? Do you feel good? Yeah, I I do definitely get a little bit have a little bit of nerves from the situation, but like I'm working through it. I think pretty decently. Yeah, you're doing great. You're doing great. Take a moment to take a deep breath as you come up, set your mind to the task at hand, and I'll let you at peace to try to get the most you can for the last minute. You can use all the tools at your disposal to get your maximum CS. I do want to ask you something, though. Go for it. Uh, on the last wave there, when I recalled after proxying that wave, I saw it was about 150, 200 gold off a of noon quiver. Uh, is there, like, not incentive for me to stay and try and get that? Oh, there would be. Yeah, 100%. And if you were CSing perfectly, you might e you actually would have it. Um, and, and that's not to make you feel bad or anything, but just, like, goals. You know, hashtag. Yeah. Um, the, it, it is absolutely pivotal to, to have a plan with, like, when your shops are going to be. I like that you've changed your camera here based on last time you were a little bit nervous about the turret being done on aggroing. Uh, and this time you were able to pick it up. That's fantastic. You've got one more wave coming. You do need to step ahead of the turret to get it on time. Mm -hmm. All right, 10 minutes, 94. Uh, very good, very good for for this situation. The fact that you're in a in a new place with me talking to you, asking you questions uh, as we're going. This was very good. You should be you should be very happy with this result. It's something that will give you a good target uh, to go for. Did you feel at the that last wave? Did you feel rushed? Um. Yes, but more so because of the time limit than 
anything else. If that was an actual, like, game state where I knew I was alone down here on that wave, I definitely would have stuck to that tower first and then taken, like, kind of, like, babysat my wave into the next turret before recalling. Okay. There's there's pros and cons to doing that. Uh, catching the wave quickly when you have a moment is often a great way to create tempo for yourself. Also, that turret is okay. killing your minions, so it's making it less for everybody else. Uh, and in general, what it looked like on that very last one, and you can tell me if you feel the same, it looked mm -hmm. a little bit more random, the the sequence that you used for clearing. Uh, on that last wave, yeah. I was a little <laughs> bit less deliberate with uh, my ease. Mm -hmm. I could have been more calculated with that, but I was trying to uh, push it a little bit faster. And, it, and it's interesting how when we have that sense of urgency that we want to do it quicker, that it actually becomes slower, right? Because yeah. we, we, we rush. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to press Shift S in mid lane. And this next wave that comes up, I want you to kill it as cleanly as possible. Like what okay. would be your normal sequence? And, and I'll leave you to it. Uh, fast push if you can. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like if you're gonna do your your very your most precise motions. All right, we're gonna do it again when this when this wave right here, but once it once it pops out, try to get it killed as quickly as possible. But take a breath and make sure that you're deliberate. That's okay. That take a great. Yeah, no, take a breath. The three misses. That's okay. The what I want to illustrate is how um, how this task can change from game to game. And if you continue making this your warm up, and you actually put yourself into a mindset of this is how I want to clear as this champion, right? Here's my pattern, yeah. right? So for example, with Yasuo, you have access to your EQs, right? And you could get AOE. Yeah. Um, and you could get. Uh, more more of the minions targeted down. You could also just sit there auto attacking melees while using your Q on the back line. Uh, a couple of different you know tricks. You're doing fine with your animations. I haven't asked you to do anything fancy yet. I know you How uh, comfortable are, are you on Yasuo's like premium mechanics? Uh, not especially. Okay, so like if I said like Beyblade and Keyblade, do you know what those are? I know roughly what they are, but I have not actually tried to like do those things. Okay, yeah, those are. With, uh... hmm? Go ahead. I was gonna say that has a lot to do with um, getting into an animation for something and then flashing. Correct. Yeah. Right. So, so different things where you can go EQ and then while the spin is happening, you can flash onto a target. Um, I'll let you. I'll show it to you real quick. So put your put a dummy down. Let's see. Um, we'll just go into the river, wherever you want, and put two dummies down, about four hundred worth apart. Uh, it's sh um, shift B, I think. Yeah, right there. A little yeah, right there is good, and another one just beyond it. Okay, so I want you to charge up your Q on the first one. Now when you throw your Q, I want you to look for the animation that says airborne. Don't, don't do it. You don't need to do anything else. Just look for the airborne. Okay. It's going to show up above the target dummy's head. Did you see it? Yep. All right, and did you see the little uh, bar underneath it? Yes. Okay, that is the duration that you have to do extra things. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll start off with, with a easier one. And you can tell me, do you, do you play like a decent amount of Yasuo? If you don't, then I'll, I'll skip this. Um, en enough for this to be valuable. Okay, 
All right, so this time after you throw your Q, I want you to EQ him again and then ultimate. Oh, I see. Okay. Oops. Okay. Okay, a little bit of uh, extra. All right, now we're going to do the next one. And and this is just going to be a cursory thing because it's not the it's not the target of what we're trying to do today, but just a, a fun thing I want to give you. This time you're going to use EQ to be your your tornado, uh -huh. and then I want you to flash as the Q animation's happening. Okay. So so when you go, you're going to have your EQ. It's going to do the whirlwind. There you go. All right. So you can EQ and then try to get your flash all the way in between the next two dummies. Okay. You have a slight you have a slightly bigger window. I don't know that that other one's fully in range. I think it is. It might have been blown away a couple times by these tornado hitting. Yeah. Oops. It's okay. This is why we do it in when you're in practice and Yasuo is one of those champions that's actually pretty rewarding to to do in practice tool because the mechanics are so are so um advanced, right? And and so yeah. specific. Okay, no, that's it, all right. Let's see, EQ. There you go, that's fantastic, all right. And that, that can help you gap close on people that would otherwise be able to dodge your tornado at that like 600 range. And yeah. instead you can you can hit it, and this is especially valuable in a game where you don't have Malphite, Gragas, Diana type people to, to help you set up. Sure. So anyways, I just wanted to go over that. It's a fun, it's a fun little thing. There's a couple tricks. Um, Beyblade and Keyblade is the way that they're there you go. Yeah. Nice job. Clean. <laughs> for for the CSing, all right. We're gonna reset the game here. Okay. Uh, you don't need to go exit. There's. Oh. That's okay. Nope. Don't worry about it. It's thirty seconds. <laughs> this time, I want you to do it with with a bot. Okay. And the bot's not going to be challenging. It's more just to have like an extra target there, something to think about. Yeah. We're gonna do the same thing. Shorter, sweeter, we're just going to get to the point with it. It doesn't matter what the bot is. We just need a body there to soak experience and to, to be something. Or it, actually, let's see. Put it into a champion that you would normally pick Yasuo into. Okay. Yeah, that wouldn't be a terrible thing. This time, if we, if we miss one, I would just want you to take a breath. And just say it's okay. Let me set myself to the task at hand, and and get the next one. Okay, we're not going to worry. Sometimes I saw that if you missed one, you were likely to miss two or three. Yeah, that is definitely a problem I always have. Is that, and I like say to supports a lot in game too. Like I don't care if you get the kills, just please don't fuck up my ZS. Sorry, screw. Yeah, right. No, that's okay. This is your own recording. You'll be good. <laughs> uh, you can accelerate the game. The uh, One of the button, bottom buttons on the first table is accelerate 30 seconds. Do that once. The uh, Unfortunately, if you do it a second time, small indie company, you know, can't handle their practice tool, and uh, it'll screw up the minion waves. Love that. That's great. Awesome. So our target here, we had 94. The cannon was just after 10. That was 95. Okay. Do you think you can beat it? Uh, I will do my best. This time, I want you to only recall at the times you would. I want you to yeah. try to find a time to set up a, a crash and a proxy. Okay. Um, I may suggest a time for you, but we're going to do it based around your, your spikes. So, like, you would like to back at a 1,100 gold, right? 1,300. Oh, 13. Well, you start with... No, 12... Ideally, Berserker Greaves first. So, yeah, 1,100, and then I like to get refillable potions. So, 1,250 is ideal. Okay. All right, you're, I'm still going to do the... Notes, you know, I'm going to kind of ask you critical questions. It's 157. The bot laner started here. 
you can assume that the jungler did not leash, or, or that they didn't leash the jungle. Uh-huh. Oh, these are the new AI bots. I wonder if they're actually, it looks like they are significantly more wow. in tune. Okay. They're probably going to make some mistakes, but uh, this is interesting. Wow, <laughs> she's actually zoning me off. Who wins this all in? Not me at level one. Yeah. I need level two to do anything. Unless she... Oh, there's the mistake. So interestingly enough, right, would this have played out the same way in a game? Probably not with other champions around. I feel like her stepping up that far would have been a big mistake if I was able to capitalize off it, but being okay. a level 1 Yasuo without dash, I couldn't really do anything about it. Especially not knowing what her second ability is, whether she took trap or not. Mm-hmm. Well, that didn't go in the direction I Get this kill. All right. All right. Now we can focus on the CS and we'll get a little bit of a lead. It's 312, and we said that the jungler started top. What does that mean that they, where might they be? They are absolutely going to be looking for a gank bot, especially after the, the AD carry died. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to hold back for a moment. Okay. Now, this is a moment where it's tempting to ward. Never ward right now. Oh, okay. At that moment, because you're either going to find out that they are there and you are dead, or you're going to find out that they are not there and you're not dead, right? It doesn't actually give you any new information. Okay. Does that make sense? No, that absolutely makes sense. The objective, um, you, your instinct is right. Jungler could be nearby. They could absolutely be on bot scuttle. So I want you to be very quick about this. All right, we're just going to assume that they gave us a moment, and I want you to fast shove this so it crashes because we don't want to leave this lane in a freeze. Are you familiar with freezes and all that? Yes. But uh, like but you I said would... management something that you're still working on. Yeah. I am okay. aware of the concept and what it looks like Recall. when it happens, but uh, I have trouble setting it up from anything that is not a neutral lane state. Okay. The A situation that might come up that was similar to this one was you got harassed a lot, you got a kill, and the wave actually at that moment, I believe, I'll, I'll go back and review it, but at that moment, I believe you had a window to just recall and the wave would have sat there for you and that would have been the best case scenario based on what we already mentioned about the jungler the the game that we played as played would have gotten us into a lot of trouble with a jungler pathing bot okay does that make sense yeah it's it's a little bit different or you know difficult to like really estimate that in a game where there's only these two champions but it's good to train our mind about it all right it's five minutes in the game which which lane is good for your jungler to uh sorry where which objective is it safe for your jungler to go for they have cryo so they would probably be able to well they have cryo top too so they could choose either but yeah their their jungler could go could be at either and your jungler really has no business um so yeah. sometimes your junglers will be like hey it's five minutes i want to trade for something and unless you have perfect information it's you knowing these things you, you can know that you know them you can't know that your teammate knows them you might have to communicate something with a back ping right you might need to tell them yeah. hey like no, you know i know you think dragon's a good time but these bot laners are going to collapse on you if you do that yeah there's not really much you can do about it all right let's finish this kill all right six minutes in the game the what time is the jungle camp the buffs respawning are you familiar with those repeat the question i'm sorry they they respawn in five minutes they started enemy jungler started top what time is his red buff going to respawn you said he started top and it respawns at five minutes it respawns in five minutes so like they oh. they yeah they killed it 15 seconds after so 130 45 645 yep perfect so right now if you're trying to make a game plan for what you can accomplish mm -hmm. uh what are we waiting for sorry i know i'm talking but i've got you noon quiver all right the having an idea of where you think the jungler is going to be will always dictate what motions you're allowed to do as a bot laner okay okay 
and and being really in tune with what you think they're doing will give you very good game plans. Now, you don't play jungle, right? I actually used to be a jungle man. Oh, okay. Great. So I you... started... Hmm? Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I started playing AD carry at first as, like, stress relief from jungle. Yeah. <laughs> I totally understand you there. What time is it? 7.30. All right. Where do you think the jungler is? Is that one of those times where I should not have warded? Uh, this time you're much more comfortable, right? It's it's not like an empty position. The We said that the jungler was likely to be at their top red at about 6.45. Okay. Um, and so there's really no world where they would be there, right? But in the next minute or so, the next 60 to 90 seconds, there's absolutely a world where the jungler could be nearby. And based on which jungler it is, whether or not you want to get that war, that ward out in the spot that you're used to, uh, out in the river where it has more chance to see movement as opposed to uh, crossing into your territory would be better. Okay. And this is a change for season 14 since the since the walls are so much further apart than they used to be. Mm -hmm. um, there's less that the wards can do. Now, the wards have basically always been better in spaces. Here, you can take that. Let's get that kill quickly. If the jungler hasn't shown up by now, based on the timer that we had, we can probably assume that they went somewhere else. Was cleaner good job thank you and here i would probably look to see if there's anything easy to take here like scuttle okay this is a great way to get your cs up uh in this challenge of getting to 100 that is absolutely a viable mm -hmm. a viable thing for you What time is it? 9.30. Where are the waves? They're all pushed into the enemy side. Okay. Is that uh, Does that mean you're gankable or...? Yes, but they could just as likely be anywhere else. Yeah, and, and really they have no business trying to show up anywhere because your jungler and your laners could be could be doing things as well, right? Yeah. Jungler okay. Counter-jungling them could be taking one of the objectives. All right, so we got 10 minutes. We went a little bit less on the CS, a little bit more on the critical questions, right? Things got a little bit more more difficult. All right, you can pop out. How are you feeling? I feel good. Okay. I do feel good. Good. This is part one, right? Part one is I want you to always feel very comfortable in your, your pattern of getting minions, right? To the point right. where... You don't need to think about it. It just needs to be fairly automatic. Uh, and when you when you do have a champion pool that is tighter, like three to five champions, then it makes it much easier to keep those patterns. I still see that for Yasuo, I don't see a clear plan for you when you're when you're CSing. It looks like you're taking each one at a time, as opposed to how you know what's the most effective way to get all of these dead the fastest. Okay. Do you do you? agree or or do you are you like no i think i'm i you know this is the pattern i saw i saw uh p zang do this uh i think that you are correct in so far as there it, i could be maximizing my damage on the minions a bit better to like push faster but it also is a bit deliberate admittedly in a way that i had trouble uh not doing when you said to push the wave faster, which I realize is something I'm gonna have to work on. Okay. But, uh, but uh, I feel much more confident in my slow pushes. Okay. Great. All right, give me a moment. Let me just link these. 
for you. I'm going to put them in the chat for, for later, something for you to keep track of. One of the things that you want to do when you're working on anything is going to be keeping track and giving yourself smart goals. All right. So smart goals is something that, that we, um, that we talk about here on, on the channel. Um, smart is an acronym, um, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Okay. And the idea is the, when you, when you are making your goals this way, it allows you to, it allows you to, um, grade yourself and, and give yourself like objectives to work for and the desire, the motivation to go. So let me, let me throw this up on screen for you really quick. I will share my screen. Okay. Uh, Discord's taking over. Let me see. Boom. Okay. Can you see this? Uh, your... Wait, hold on. Oh, wait. I need to say go live. Goal setting smart goals is what I have up on screen. Yep, I see it. Perfect. Um, and this is something I'll, I'll link you this, this whole presentation. Okay. So you can look, but this is, this is the part that matters. It's from slide 13. The idea of having smart goals, um, uh, saying, for example, I want to get to 100 CS in 10 minutes on Yasuo by the end of the week, right? And the idea is it's very specific, it's measurable, it's achievable, all right? You got 95 on your first dry run while I was talking, which is incredibly difficult because you're simulating all that information, so it's definitely achievable. Um, you can see why it's relevant, right? Mm -hmm. um, the ability to just have that much more gold in your game will matter, and time-bound, giving yourself a a metric like a spot i want to accomplish accomplish this by the end of the week this very simple uh way of putting it will allow you to progress it in a way that'll make it much more comfortable right where, where you expect to get 100 cs if you're not challenged obviously in a game there's going to be many more dynamics there's other champions everything's going to mess with it but you want to be very comfortable with how am I, what's my CS pattern under turret? What am I gonna do? What, when should I proxy? How do I clear a wave when I want to clear it the absolute fastest possible, right? All of these things. So, so what you're saying is being comfortable with knowing my game plan if there is like, if the other factors are not stopping me from doing that. Right, yeah. And, and then when you're that comfortable, when there's no other factors, you will have that thing that you can rely on in the moments where it's much more stressful, right? I'm, they're preparing a dive. And then you can make the decision because you know how quickly you can kill those casters, for example. How quickly can I kill these casters and dash out? I can give up one CS under my turret, but pick up the three casters and one of the melees and and it clears the wave really quickly so they can't really dive me anymore right you see how that has real implications for for your game yeah yeah um sure. most mostly the idea is that i want this to be something that you are good at and comfortable with to the point where you don't need to think about it in game because by putting it on the back burner and you know think of of cooking a meal you have something that's simmering in the back like yeah you're keeping track of it but it's not the main dish right there's so many other things to think of that we want csing to be fairly mundane okay okay we want it to be the simmering sauce right it's just it's the sauce you're just like it's going it's cooking the whole time you know this will help the whole meal i'll, I'll have more gold i'll be more re uh relevant i'll have a higher level if i did it very quickly i'm also safer right if i can if i can kill these minions quickly so um, that is the objective for this part. Super boring, super <laughs> super mundane, but in in the hundreds and you know, let me. Uh, I guess I could look up exactly how much how many games you play, but most people play hundreds of games in the season, and over all those games, imagine that you get five or ten more CS, right? Just every single game, you'll have that much more gold going into other spots. So what I want to show you now is what you're going to do with this in your games, all right? And specifically, as a marksman, what your main goal is. So give me a timetable of what you expect to be doing as a, as a marksman 
in the game. Like, what, how long do you expect to be in each place? Where do you, you know, when do you think you are strong enough to help with Baron? Uh, you know, what, whatever it is, like, I'm just going to jot these down, starting from the beginning of the game. All right. Um, 1.30, leash, going to lane. Uh, I'm going to have to slow my brain down to think through this. Okay. Um, start going to lane trying to lately i've been trying to practice pushing early to get uh level two advantage as soon as possible uh looking for some kind of trade at level two as long as i don't like with the exception of lanes where yeah if available that works uh uh Continuing to farm the lane. This is the part where the wave management issues come in. Okay. What um what is the breakpoint? Let's let's pick one of those numbers, eleven hundred, twelve fifty, or thirteen hundred. Which one are what's your target? Which one would you love to back on? Let's say I'm playing my most confident, like actual marksman. Okay. Would it be Senna? Uh, definitely want to back on that 1300 mark, at least. Um, uh, Do you know when you can get 1300 gold? It's okay if you don't. Um, in a good game... Probably somewhere between six and eight minutes. The having having a plan. I'm gonna put this as like an addendum. Um, what is your plan for the first four waves? And then, okay. This is always gonna be based on the jungler, right? If you know that your jungler is pathing away from you, and you know that theirs is coming towards you, then you're gonna have a plan that's much more based on like I want just a very early crash and then having it come back to me, and then we're gonna sit under a turret. Or if it's the other way around that your jungler is coming to you, you want to decide: Are we setting up for like pushing hard so that we can get a dragon, or are we trying to yeah. dive them, or are we trying to freeze it so that they're stuck in a spot where they're super gangable, right? Yeah. And any of them I... are are good plans, and and they will change based on the yeah. roster right who which champions are there and, and where they're starting yeah um this is right right here something that you should get comfortable with which wave am i crashing so that i can back at 1300 okay right so this is this is a um goal for ourselves one of those smart goals i want to know when or know which wave I can get 1300 gold on and subsequently when can I push it hard all right so just that so much of the game is uh, I'll call it predictable and solvable at the beginning of the game as it continues it gets much and much harder but for right now you can set yourself a goal on Senna I want to know that on wave eight i am crashing that wave and that will get me my 1300 gold and because of that that means on wave seven i want to start i want to start stacking up right i'm going to start attacking minions more than just last hits right i'm going to start poking the enemy so that i'm, I'm a little bit ready for my push in case a, a fight comes out does that make sense so on wave seven pushing it in more to get wave eight to Wait, hold on. I'm misunderstanding the management here, I think. Okay, because... I'll, I'll throw it up on screen. So uh, most waves, if they're non-cannons, are six versus six, right? Mm -hmm. Let's yes. say that you want to start pushing, and it's, and it's a fairly even state. We're five minutes into the game, and you're anticipating that I, I can get my, my noon quiver soon if I start pressing now. I don't want to have to worry about like getting trapped under turret and missing 
because also if I get trapped under turret while I have 1300, then it's really awkward because I want to leave, but I don't because the next wave, they're going to deal turret damage. And right, like you can see how having that plan at a thousand gold will really affect what you can do uh, as you're pressing forward for that next benchmark. So most minion waves have six versus six. So let's say you start pressing, all right, and you're able to get two minions dead very quickly. Six okay. versus four. Now this is gonna start kinda, your minions are gonna take over a little bit from this point, and they're yeah. gonna start hitting harder than theirs are hitting yours. And at this point, you start trading either with their champion, but it's one for one attacks. Meaning you've already gotten your two minion lead. Now, if they hit a minion, you hit a minion. Okay. If they hit you, you hit them. And you're basically saying, I, I want to keep this because what it's going to mean is the next wave is going to come up. And now you're going to say, let's say three more minions each have died, right? So it, it we kept it at uh, one for one and we ended up at a like four versus zero, right? Because your minion wave was, was a little bit stronger. The next wave comes in. Now we're 10 versus six, right? Okay. And you can start, is this uh, kind of a drag or, or is this interesting to you? Well, it, this is good. I am, am especially appreciating the visual help. I don't do well with like not having a visual aid. Okay. I am just like trying to, trying to wrap my head around it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll I'll put it up in on screen right right after, or I'll I'll demonstrate it and then I'll give it to you to be to be your own task. Okay. Now it's ten versus six. Now I say shove. Now I have the protection of the fact that I have six casters. I have a bigger wave. If they actually want to fight me, then there's a much better chance that I can just win this fight because I'm that I have that many more minions around me. Okay. It also means that when I shove. It might be like nine versus zero at turret. This will accomplish two things. One, it pins them to the turret. This does all sorts of things like opens dragon options. It opens recall options, right? It gives it gives us all, we kind of used our turn. This is commonly used uh, or, or known as our turn. We have a bigger wave. It's now our turn. We get to choose what to do with it. Do we, slow put do we slow it down even more and like wait for the next wave and he hit a gigantic crash or do we shove this and recall or do we shove it and go get dragon right once we have this winning state and it's our turn we get to decide what to do with our turn okay. doing this and you can see that it takes like two waves to do it so all in all you basically need a minute 10 of prep like you need to be thinking over a minute ahead of time. If the idea is I want to recall on this, then you really need to start executing this plan when you're at about a thousand gold. Okay. Right? That is, yeah. yeah. That, that feels like a good benchmark for me to, yeah just identifying okay i've hit this gold threshold now i should start looking to prep the wave mm -hmm. perfect and th and that's sometimes it's going to be based on how much gold you have sometimes it's going to be based on jungler path and what they're going to do uh, but making making it very very simple uh and having an idea of what do i want to do right a lot of people don't think about league of legends what would i do if there's no one in the game right like how would i win the fastest how would i do things having an answer to that allows you to make more informed decisions in your game right yeah so so i'm just going to act this out really quickly i'm just going to go and fast forward the game twice Welcome to Ring. hopefully it doesn't screw up the minions too bad and we'll just chill hopefully you don't mind that it's timo i think he's cute I don't either. I... So I'm just going to put a visual to this. The wave's going to arrive at 1.30, and I want you to look at what it does by 2.30 with the cannon, 
based on what I do. Okay. All right, I'm going to put an enemy dummy here just for the sake of experience. Um, so I just did that with the hotkeys, but there's a dummy in here. And this is just meant so that we get similar. All right, so it starts with this. Now it might also look something like this, where I hit their minions. Look, see how their minions behave? They come after me. Yeah. Anytime you poke anyone, all the minions are going to get mad at you. And it will automatically create this ebb. Now you see how I have an advantage already? Yeah. So now I can sit on this. I'm up a full minion. This is enough for me to start thinking about crashing the third wave. All right, and this might be very important to me if I'm, if my jungler is pathing from bottom to top and theirs is going from top to bottom. Oops, I should probably try to get these. Then I really want to get out of this lane at that moment, right? I don't want to sit here in this wave as their jungler is coming down to us. You want to be out of here by the time he can show up. All right, what's my objective now? See how I have my minion advantage? It's nine to nine to seven. Now I'm just going to shove. All right, and right now I'm not paying much attention to last hits. The idea is just to show you uh, what might happen. See how I got one minion early and then I just swapped to mostly just last hits. And now there's a minion crash. That makes so much sense. OK, I I remember just like all the fucking, all the last hitting videos that I've watched are always like, make sure you take at least one of the minions and then last hit. And I was like, OK, well, why? Mm -hmm. But that makes so much sense. And, and you see how, like, the effect is drastic. The snowball is real. Yeah. The minion wave gets big really quickly. Now check this all out. These three minions are the only ones attacking any of theirs. All the other ones are glued to the turret. Right now, obviously, there would be some fight. There would be some fight back. Enemy team would be like pushing these. But check this out. I haven't lost a single ca a minion yet. And I got a re I got a recall off. Now it's their turn. I have to be really careful. I don't want to get into any fights now because that could be problematic. But I disappeared. I disappeared in the time that the jungler might have been pathing towards the bot side. So now he's elsewhere. Those and now I'm I'm good to just kind of chill here. And now I'll wait. Their jungler disappears. My jungler comes back. And suddenly this becomes a problem for them. All right. And I might set myself up to leave like only four casters alive. Leaving four casters alive means that it's still likely to continue pushing towards me uh, without any interference. And now I can chill, right? And now this lane state, I've come back. I have an extra 10 attack damage, which is more valuable in the early game than it is at any other point in the game. And now I can just kind of sit in the, a pretty comfortable spot right here, right? I'm okay. None of my last hits are hard because they have more minions than me that I don't need to be challenged by that, like uh, seven minions hitting the same target at the same time sort of thing. And I can just chill here. See how see how easily that gets accomplished? Yeah. And then as you play the game, you'll when you do this um, 100 CS challenge, you'll start looking and seeing when did I actually have 1,000 gold? When did I have 1,300 gold? And giving yourself a yeah. really good mundane, uh, or, or I don't want to say mundane, a very predictable pattern of play. Yeah. Predictable not in a bad way, though. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Predictable, like, I can make this happen. And it is good for me to make it happen. And if we okay. called it a smart goal, saying, I want to recall on exactly 1,300 gold on a crashed wave, and I want to learn how to do that in this week, right? Or I want to learn how to do that. that that's a pretty achievable goal. And, and seeing how the, the wave reacts, that is absolutely something that is in your wheelhouse to do. Um, we we went pretty long on on that. Hopefully hopefully it was interesting. I don't want to yeah, keep you for sure. for too long. I want to give you one other thing as you play your games, and this was okay. specific to uh, your average deaths are pretty high for for marksmen. Okay. This especially in the end game, it's not only affecting your team's ability to output damage in fights. Um, but also affecting your ability to access waves, right? Every every time that you die after level nine, that's a whole wave that you've lost, right? And and so yeah. that 100 to 200 gold, depending on a cannon wave, after 25 minutes, you've missed 
200 gold, maybe 400 gold, right? Two waves might be gone. Someone else on your team had to go pick it up. And that stuff adds up a lot. And, and more importantly, just being alive for your team. The movements as you go through games, I just want you to have an, uh, a concept or a plan for how do I make sure that I am alive? Okay. All right. And that can look like... Mm, this is not what pull up something why well, it's not coming up just trying to get mm -hmm. go ahead i was gonna say i actually the most tilting thing or like the thing that tilts me the most in the game is missing too much CS. So especially when the enemy laners have a lot of like pressure and they are like making me miss a lot of CS if I don't want to die, it gets very frustrating. Mhm. Mm and then our brain starts gravitating on that and the stress of that. Yeah. You're you're like minus 1, minus 2, right? Oh shoot, I missed a cannon. And it's very yeah. easy to think about this and it's like, ah, you know. Um yeah. That's exactly where my brain gets stuck. The hopefully by having this be more planned for yourself, it'll be much easier to just get in, get out. If you do miss one, it's just a breath, right? You just take a breath. And that's the best reset button that you have. Um, our body generates cortisol as a stress hormone, as like a fight or flight response. And over a league game, it builds up a lot. And especially yeah. the more typing that people do, um it that can add to it especially if we're the ones typing normally when we die we have a very easy moment to take a deep breath and just like all right what's next right it's and and that's an important step believe it or not that like relaxation moment is actually pivotal and every right. time that you recall it it's an opportunity to take a box breath i don't if you've ever heard of it it's just 4 seconds in hold out and then hold and that 16 seconds coincides with your travel time back to lane and that can be an amazing tool for erasing this right if you were worried about shoot there i'm missing cannons they're harassing me i'm i'm my jungler is not ganking my my lane when it's available all that goes away when you essentially suffocate your cortisol highway to your brain by taking that deep breath it actually inhibits its ability to do that it's only um, controlling the chemicals. Yeah, yeah. Just literally, a deep breath actually holds it in, right? It just uh, it it basically cuts off the circulation, where or, or cuts off the circuit that it would be using to just kind of put you yeah. into that anxious hyperdrive. A yeah. little bit of anxious is good, like caring about it and and wanting to perform is good, but overdoing yeah. it is tough. Mm -hmm. I think by being comfortable with this, I think it will really help you. With this idea the difference between going here and going here if you're a bot laner yeah. right and just habitually this one might be a problem whereas this one's almost definitely safe right yeah. um where am i going am i am i going to this bush when it's dark or did i push my wave first and pin them to their lane before leaving right small things like this will give you a little bit more control over your game and if there's nothing else that we we do today those are just the things i want you to be very comfortable on your cs to the part to the point where it opens your mind to other things and with this information we can say like kaisa says stay alive yes all right and and that is really our biggest goal as AD Carry. We can't do our job unless we do this. Yeah. So I think we've gotten plenty to, to do right now. Um, I'm going to check in with you uh, a week from now and see how, how your SMART goal went and, and then see what's next, right? And, and does it open up new doors? Does it create new problems? Or does it just say, hey, wow, this is crazy. I'm 
you know, let, let's say this might just give us 40 CS more per game and my, my death goes down to three instead of five, six, okay. right? Those, those are things that could easily happen from this or at the beginning, it might be a little bit stressful as you're in plant, you know, inputting the new strategy. It might be a little bit of a dip first, but what you should expect is this kind of growth. Yeah. This is inputting it and then it becomes comfortable and then you level up. And, and then we can talk some more about what it means. Uh, I mean, it sounds like you're comfortable with, with ideas, concepts like Pryo. Um, yeah. And when you're not stressed about CS, you'll be able to think more about this and what it means for which direction I can go as a carry. And that'll open some doors for your mid-game macro.